morning. I hope everyone is doing well today. <clears throat> this module that we've been doing, module 12, is a short module, in my opinion. Um, so we just had a test last weekend, and we are going to nearly finish up the model module today. And then for homework, um, you'll have a couple questions this weekend. And then um, next week, we will start studying. I'm sorry, my hair. We will start studying, and um, we will go ahead and have our test. And I may do the test differently, um, since all we have to do is study and do the test next week. I might study on Monday and Tuesday with you guys. And then um, Wednesday, maybe have where I'm here for you to take the test um, while I'm available live if you have questions. Um, so give me some feedback there if you want to do that. Um, I'm willing to do that. So just let me know. Um, we'll kind of talk about that, hopefully, if some other people join in. Um, all right, well, we're going to jump right in for today. Uh, we are going to start on page 433, and you'll get to hear me struggle because there's some hard words to pronounce in this module, but I've been practicing, and I think I got it. Um, good morning, Garrett. I was just saying that um, this module is super short, so we're probably going to go ahead and finish today um, with module 12 and maybe have a couple questions for homework. And then next week, we'll just have to study and do the test. And what do you think about um, having the test like live on Wednesday that you can start working on while I'm like here for questions? Would you want to do that? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll probably study Monday and Tuesday then, and then uh, Wednesday we'll have that um, test, and I'll just kind of like chill here and answer any questions y'all might have. You might be the only one, so um, that would be fun too. Um, all right, so we are going to start on page 433 today, and I was just saying I am struggling to pronounce some of these words, but I've been practicing them, so hopefully I don't sound too dumb. But we are starting with calorimetry that's one of them calorimetry um, so we talked about the calorie yesterday so obviously this is going to be related to that um, and the book did tell you that you didn't need to memorize the specific um, heats of any um, substances but you do need to memorize the specific heat of water that's the one and um, it relates back excuse me to the definition of a calorie like we talked about yesterday um, so that a calorie, we defined it as the amount of heat necessary to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. And so that tells us that the specific heat of water, you'll see it there in blue, is one calorie per gram times Celsius or 4.184 joules over grams times Celsius, degrees Celsius. So you do need to know both of those numbers for the specific heat of water. You'll use it in a lot of upcoming questions and um, it's probably on your test too. I can't quite remember. All right, um, so that's the specific heat of water. We'll cover that. Um, and it should, let's see. Um, okay, let's see what they're doing after that. Sorry, I'm a little jumbled this morning. It's been crazy. So, okay, if we measure the mass of an object, its temperature change, and how much energy it's experienced, then we can calculate the heat, which was that Q um, equation we were using yesterday. So the question that we want to ask is, how do we measure mass? Well, we use a balance. That's pretty easy. Um, how do we measure change in temperature? We use a thermometer, and we start with the initial temperature, and then we measure the final temperature. And just subtract them, which works well for liquids and gases, but what about for solids? So this section is going to cover um, an interesting process of how we measure the change in temperature of solids. Um, you can't use a thermometer, obviously. Um, so what we're going to do is measure the temperature of the solids environment. Um, so if we allow metal to sit in one place for a while, then the heat will transfer between the metal and its environment, and eventually the two will be the same temperature. So to determine the specific heat, we'll need two different environments and two different temperatures. So the change in temperature will be the difference there. And you'll see more of that in just a minute, but they're just kind of introducing it. So first, we need to know how much energy the object is holding. So that's that Q um, there. 
since we can't measure that directly, we're gonna measure how much heat the object's environment absorbs. So this process that chemists use is called calorimetry. Um, if you turn the page on 434 at the top, you'll see a picture there of um, this type of experiment. So the apparatus that you see there that has, it's like a square and it has water in it, um, that's called a calorimeter. And it's an insulated container that holds a known mass of water. So say we put 100 grams of water in there. Um, it's usually water, it could be another liquid, but usually water. Um, and then you'll see the black thing is the rod that's usually stirring like the liquid constantly to make sure the heat's evenly distributed. And then you see the thermometer that's constantly measuring the temperature. And that little tiny square that's in there, that's your block of solid metal, whatever it is that we're trying to measure the temperature of. Um, so you put the hot metal into the calorimeter and it starts to emit heat. And eventually the heat is absorbed by the water. And so you'll see the thermometer rise, rise, rise. And when it stops rising, you know that that is the actual temperature the experiments over that the heat's totally distributed at that point. So then you'll read the temperature. So that's what they're just kind of describing to you because we're gonna do some math problems involving this type of um, situation. So um, let's see. Okay, so you'll just measure the temperature of the water at the beginning and then temperature at the end once the metal is placed into the water. Um, and then that'll be your change in temperature. So we also can write an equation to relate the heat gained or lost by the object, the water, and the calorimeter. And that's equation 12.3. It's kind of two thirds of the way down the page. And it's negative Q of the object, that little tiny square, that metal, equals the Q of the water, plus the Q of the calorimeter. So we call this equation the calorimetry equation. Um, and it says that any heat gained by the calorimeter and water must be lost by the object contained in the calorimeter, which makes sense because you're not creating energy, you're just transferring it. So whatever energy that object had is now in the water and calorimeter. So that's why that equation kind of makes sense. Now, we want to talk about why there's a negative sign in front of that um, Q of the object. And the reason is because the object is releasing the heat. It's losing energy. So it's going to be negative. Um, the water and the calorimeter are gaining that heat. Um, so that's why that's always going to be negative. In these type of experiments, they never put a colder piece in the water. It's always hotter. So always losing energy. Um, I did want to just read the paragraph at the top of 435 because I thought it was um, like a good summary of all that. So I'm just going to read it and you can follow along. In the end then, if we want to measure the amount of heat released by a substance, we can surround that substance with water and a calorimeter and measure the change in temperature of the water and the calorimeter. Equations 12.1, 12.2, and 12.3 will then tell us exactly how much heat was released. We can also measure the specific heat of a substance with calorimetry. Um, so example 12.2 that we're about to look at will hopefully help, help you like see it in math form. Um, but does that experiment kind of make sense so far? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, share the screen and kind of talk about 12.2 there. All right, so a chemical reaction is carried out in a five gram calorimeter. The calorimeter has a specific heat of 1.9 joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius and is filled with 150 grams of water. If the temperature of the water was 24 degrees Celsius before the reaction took place and it rose to 32 degrees Celsius by the end of the experiment, how much heat was released by the reaction? Okay, so they gave you your little um, equation there. The one that we just learned, <clears throat> negative Q of the object equals Q of the water plus Q of the calorimeter because we're wanting to find out Q, negative Q of the object. We wanna know how much heat was released. Um, so they're gonna kind of walk you through how to figure that out. So first of all, we need to know, in order to figure out the Q of the water and the Q of the calorimeter, we need mass, specific heat, and change in temperature because you remember your equation from yesterday. So, you need mass, you need the C, which is the specific heat, 
and you need the change in temperature. Okay, so first we're gonna kind of see what we do have. Well, we have, um, we know the specific heat of water because we just talked about it. They give us the specific heat of the calorimeter, so we're good there. And they gave us grams of calorimeter and the grams of the water. So all we need to do now is calculate change in temperature so that we can then plug all that in. So we're gonna do that first. So the change in temperature is gonna be equal to the initial temperature minus the, no, sorry, the final minus the initial. I always do that backwards, I don't know why. Okay, so we're gonna plug that in. The change in temperature is equal to, the final they tell us is 32 minus the initial they tell us was 24. So that's going to give us eight degrees for our change in temperature. Now we can just start plugging in. So first let's do Q of calorimeter because that's the one they did first. Calorimeter, that's a hard word. Okay, calorimeter, so the mass they tell us in the equation was five grams. So five times, we need C, the specific heat, they tell me is 1.95. And then we're going to multiply that by the change in temperature. Plugging it in there in the equation. And we will get, looks like 78 joules. I'm just looking at what they already calculated just to save time. But if you put it in the calculator, you should get that too. All right, so now we have Q of calorimeter. And remember, I'm going to go ahead and write over here the equation that we're looking for. So we need Q of water and Q of calorimeter. So this is what we're looking for. So we found this piece, now we need this piece. So we're gonna plug in to that equation now. All right, the mass of the water was 150 grams times the specific heat of water we know, if we go back, we need to use the same unit. So for the calorimeter, they use the joules per grams times Celsius. So we need to use that um, 4.184, not the one calorie. So 4.184, the right units, and then times eight as well. And looks like we will get they want two significant figures, so they're gonna get 5.0 times 10 to the third joules. Okay, any questions on how to figure out the Q of the calorimeter or the Q of the water? How much heat their energy they're absorbing? No? Okay. All right, so we're just gonna plug <clears throat> now. So if you turn the page, you'll see at the top of 436, the rest of it. So we're just gonna plug into this equation now. So negative Q of the object equals Q of the water, 5.0 times 10 to the third, plus the Q of the calorimeter, which is 78 joules. And when you add those together, you will get, you'll get 5,000, and 78 joules, which then to get the right number of significant figures, you're gonna to have to go to round up to 5,100, and then we need to add our negative sign. So negative 5,100 joules. And that is how much heat the object released. So let's see, make sure we answered the question. Yes, it tells us it's asking how much heat was released by the reaction. So we answered that. And it's negative because, again, it released the heat and the water and the calorimeter absorbed it. Um, so uh, let's see. They just wanted to point out that based on the rules of addition and subtraction, the final answer has to be in the hundreds place because you had um, this number is in the hundreds place. Um, so instead of like numbers of significant figures, we're looking at um, placement. So that's why we got 5100. And then um, we talked about how it lost energy. So now we're going to do example 12.3. And 12.3 shows us how to determine specific heat. 
So at this point, we're still determining energy that was lost or gained. Um, and this time, this example is going to show us how to figure out C if we don't know C, and that's the specific heat, how much heat it requires um, to heat an object. So we're going to um, do that one now. <clears throat> so 12.3 on page 436, a 28.5 gram block of an unknown metal is heated to a temperature of 151.7 degrees Celsius. It is then dropped into the same calorimeter that was used in the previous example, and it gives you the stats there. If the initial temperature of the water was 22 degrees Celsius and its final temperature was 24.2 degrees Celsius, what was the specific heat of the metal and what is its identity? If you remember, um, if we have the specific heat, we can figure out what substance it is because that table um, that they gave us early on in the module, it's on page 430, gives us substances and their specific heat because each substance has its own unique specific heat. So we are gonna figure that out and then from the table, we'll figure out what the metal actually is. All right, so first we need to calculate all of our Qs, figure out how much energy is being lost and gained. So we're gonna do that first. Um, but to do that, we need to make sure we have all of our pieces. So we're looking for Q equals M times C times change in temperature. All right, so in order to solve for C, we're going to need this Q piece, and then we can kind of re rearrange this to solve for C. And you've done that before. So first, let's make sure we have all the pieces. Well, we know we have mass. They gave us that. We know we have um, the change in temperature. We just need to solve for it. So we're going to go ahead and figure out what the change in temperature is, which is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And when we plug that in, we get the final temperature they said was 24.2. And we're going to subtract 22 was the initial temperature that's gonna give us a change of 2.2 degrees Celsius. All right, so now we have everything we need to kind of um, plug these in and solve. So what we're gonna do first is find the Q of the calorimeter. So I'm gonna start there. And that's gonna be equal to the mass of the calorimeter, which was five grams times the specific heat, which was 1.95, and this is all given to me in the word problem. And then the change in temperature, so 2.2. So the calorimeter absorbed 21 joules of energy. Okay, now I have that one. Now I need the water again, because the goal is to figure out how much heat the object released so that we can then solve for the specific heat. <clears throat> the so <clears throat> for the cal calorimeter. I told you that's a hard one. The uh, 5 times 1.9, does that always stay the same? No, they'll give you, so we'll talk about it in just a minute, but they'll either give you the mass and the specific heat of the calorimeter, or they'll tell you um, that it was too small to even make a difference and to just use zero. So um, if they give you the mass and the specific heat, then you'll need to solve for the specific um, amount of energy that it absorbed. Okay. All right, so the Q of the water, they give me 150 grams again of water. And then the C, the specific heat for water is 4.184. And the change in temperature was 2.2. That's gonna give me 1400 joules of water. I mean, of uh, energy that the water absorbed. So now I have Q for calorimeter, Q for water. I can figure out how much energy my object released. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we know negative Q of the object is equal to the Q of the water plus the Q of the calorimeter. So we'll go ahead and plug it in. Negative Q of the object equals 1400 joules plus 21 joules. And we're going to get, um, it looks like 1,421, but because this is adding the um, 
it has to be in the hundreds place because that is the least precise measurement we have. So actually when we round, and this is an example of what you just asked, so that's like perfect timing. Actually when we round, we're gonna round down because there's a two to 1400 instead of um, 1500. So what ended up happening was that the amount of energy that the calorimeter absorbed was so small that it doesn't even like count. So when they round, they're gonna get negative 1400 joules that the object released. So basically what they're saying is the Q of the calorimeter was so small, it didn't even affect our answer because of significant figures. So the effect was so little, then we don't even need to regard it. Um, so that's an example. They did give you the stats, so you have to figure it out, but often it's so small, they're just gonna tell you to ignore it. Um, okay. So this is how much energy the object released. So now I can figure out, I can rearrange this equation to figure out C because I have all the other elements for my object. So let's go ahead and um, look at something I noticed that um, I, I almost missed was that the object's initial temperature is different than the water's initial temperature. So don't forget you have to calculate a new change in temperature for the object. It's not going to be the same as the water because the object starts off really hot. So we need to figure out the change in temperature for the water. And that's equal to the um, final temperature. I mean, I'm sorry, for the object, not for the water. So the final temperature was 24.2. And the initial temperature of the object was 151.7. They give me that in the word problem. So my change in temperature for the object is negative 127.5 degrees Celsius. Quite a big difference in the change in temperature for the water and calorimeter. Um, okay, so that's gonna be our piece for Q of the object. All right, so now let's rearrange our equation to solve for C. So if we want C by itself, I'm gonna try to do this here. We're gonna divide by M to get it to cancel. And we're gonna divide by the change in temperature to get that to cancel. So now C is by itself over here. Have to do the same thing to both sides. So I'm gonna divide this side by the mass and the change in temperature. Sorry, that's so messy. So now I'll put my new equation over here, what we're left with. We're solving for C, specific heat, that's what they're asking me for equals Q divided by, in parentheses, mass times change in temperature. All right, so let's just plug it in. C equals Q I figured out was negative 1400 joules divided by the mass. They tell me the mass of the object was 28.5 grams times the change in temperature was negative 127.5 degrees Celsius. And then when we plug that in the calculator, we will get, looks like 0 0.39, and the units there would be joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. You can see that there in your um, problem. So joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. So now we need to turn back to page 430 and look and find out what metal has um, this specific heat. So I'm looking for 0 0.39. Well, closest one is zinc. Do what? Closest one is zinc. The closest one is zinc, but it looks like they rounded to significant figures before um, figuring out the metal. So I'm gonna plug it in my calculator and see what they got, what the precise answer is. So negative 1400 divided by 28.5 times negative 127.5. Okay, so when I do it in the calculator, I get 0.3852. So let's see. 
And there's a three, eight, five, one. Yep. So that's going to be my closest one. So that's, um, that tells me it's copper. So if you're ever asked a question like this before, um, figuring out what it is, you're probably going to have to have a really exact answer. So that's how they got copper there. All right. That's a lot going on. So if you have any questions. Um, really? Okay. <clears throat> you just plug it in for what it needs, pretty much? Yeah, pretty much. It is a long problem, and like we talked about before, you kind of have to think about what they give you and what they're asking you. Um, and what steps you need to take to get there. So we're going to do some examples. And um, I actually have 15 minutes left uh, before my time runs out. So I, I only have a couple more things to talk about. So we might can do one or two of your homework questions together. Okay. All right. So um, real quick, we'll just kind of go over what happened. Um, let's see. The heat absorbed. Okay, we talked about that. I'm going to move on and make sure I cover everything before I do the homework questions. Um, basically, when you see anything about a calorimeter, you're going to know it's going to be a calorimetry uh, problem. So you'll, you'll want to use these equations. Um, okay. So like I said, at the top of 438, it tells you that um, sometimes, like I said, the calorimetry the calorimeter um, heat that's absorbed is so small, we can really disregard it. So if they, if they tell you that um, to disregard it, you'll just use zero for that uh, value. So for the Q of the calorimeter would just be zero if they tell you to ignore it. Um, and I think that's pretty much all you need for that. All right, so let's move on and just do, um, let's start with 12.5. <clears throat> And I will say it, it did take me a while to grasp this. So it's definitely something that we need to practice. So I'm kind of glad we have a couple days to study um, next week. I had to really think hard when I was doing these problems. All right. So 12.5 in the student book. Ready? I'm going to clear this out. All right. So it says a calorimeter holds 188 grams of water at an initial temperature of 23 0.5 degrees Celsius. A 55 gram mass piece of metal at 100 degrees Celsius is dropped into the calorimeter and the final temperature of the water is 28 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of the metal? And then it tells you to ignore the calorimeter in this problem so that's kind of nice we don't have to solve for that. So first I know that I'm gonna be, let's see, they're asking me for the specific heat of the metal. So if I want that, first I have to figure out the Q of the metal. To figure out the Q of the metal, I need the Q of the water in the calorimeter. So I'm just gonna kind of put this equation out here so that I know that's my goal. And first, let's figure out Q for water. All right, so let's go ahead and start plugging stuff in. The Q for water is going to be mass, which is 188 grams times the specific heat of water. And we know because they are talking about, we're going to use the 4.184 instead of the one. That's going to be more commonly used because we normally measure in joules, not calories. And then the change in temperature, I do need to figure out, but I'm just going to do it right here because we know that the change in temperature is going to be the final minus the initial. So the final temperature of the water, it tells me, was 28 degrees minus the initial, which was 23.5. So you can just plug it in like that. You don't really need the extra step unless you just want to do it. Where did you get the 4.1? This is the specific heat of water. That's that value we talked about um, okay. in the beginning of class. You just kind of have to memorize it or highlight it in your book. And once you use it a few times, you'll just kind of know it anyway. 
All right, once you plug all that in your calculator, you are going to get this number. This is what I got, it's a big number. So then you round to, it has to be two, let's see. It has to be to the ones place, I think. I don't know, the book did 3,500, but to me it looks like it should be to the ones. Well, this is the decimal. They're all in the first decimal place. So technically you could go 35, 39, 0.7 joules. No, you're multiplying. That's why. I'm sorry. 3,500 joules because you have three. Sometimes I don't understand how they do significant figures. It should be three significant figures. I'm going to go 35.40. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So now we have the Q of water. And so they told us the Q of the calorimeter we can disregard, so we're gonna just plug that in as zero. So we're gonna use that equation, negative Q of the object is equal to Q of the water plus Q of the calorimeter. Okay, so negative Q, whoops. Can you hear Rodney? A little bit. Okay, negative Q of the object equals, I'm gonna plug in Q of the water, 3540 joules, plus Q of the calorimeter, which they told me I could just put zero. So the negative, the object is negative 3540 joules, which makes sense because if the water and the calorimeter absorbed this much, then the object released that much. So really you didn't even have to do that equation, but it's good for practice. Okay, so that is your um, heat that was released by your object. So now we're able to um, go ahead and solve for the specific heat of the object. So let's first figure out our change in temperature. Well, we can just plug it all in at the same time if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Let's rearrange. Do you remember before when we rearranged that we got um, divided by mass and change in temperature? on this side and then divided by mass and change in temperature on this side. Okay. So my equation for specific heat is going to be equal to Q divided by mass times change in temperature. I'm going to put a parenthesis. Okay. So C equals Q is negative 3540. The mass of the metal that they told me was 55 grams. Now we need another set of parentheses to figure out our change in temperature. And remember, it's going to be different than your change in temperature for your water. Okay, so it tells me that the final temperature, it, the final temperature is gonna be the same as the final temperature of the water, 28, but the initial temperature of my metal was 100. A little bit confusing to plug in, but we can do two sets of parentheses. So negative 3540 divided by open parentheses, 55 times another set of parentheses, 28 minus 100, close both parentheses. And you should get 0.89, let me see, let me just type it out. Are you doing it in your calculator? Yeah. Okay, tell me if you get the same thing as me. And it kind of goes 39, 39, 39, 39 after that.
I did. Okay, awesome. And so then I'm just going to round to three significant figures because that's the smallest amount I have, and I'm going to get eight nine three. And the unit is joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. This is your answer. And just for fun, I looked at the table, and it looks like the closest one is aluminum. So that was most likely aluminum. All right, I think we have time for one more. So we'll do 12.6, and then you'll just have 12.7 for homework. Okay. All right. A calorimeter, and then it gives you the um, mass and the specific heat, so I know I'm going to have to solve for a Q of the calorimeter, holds 120 grams of water at an initial temperature of 23 degrees Celsius, a 45-gram piece of metal at 110 degrees Celsius is dropped into the calorimeter, and the final temperature of the water is 29.2 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of the metal? So again, we're going to kind of go through the same process because they're asking me for a specific heat. So just a reminder, the more and more you see this, the more it will be ingrained in your mind. And I'm going to try to find the cube of my object so that I can plug that in, which I know is equal to Q of the water plus Q of the calorimeter. So first, let's start with Q of the water. So we need the mass of the water. We're just plugging it into this equation right here to solve for the Q of the water first. So Q of the water is gonna be equal to the mass, which was 120 grams, they tell me, times the specific heat, which is that number we kind of memorized, 4.184, and then times the change in temperature, which I'm just gonna do right here. So the final temperature, 29.2 minus the initial temperature, which was 23. Okay, so if you plug that in your calculator, 120 times 4.184 times, do a parenthesis there, 29.2 minus 23. And you'll get this number, whoops, sorry. And that would be joules. Since we are multiplying, we can round to three decimal places, or three, sorry, significant figures. So three, one, one, zero joules. All right, now we're gonna solve for the Q of the calorimeter. They give me the mass there is 8.5 grams. They give me the specific heat is 2.31. And it's gonna be the same change in temperature as was in the water. So you can plug it in just like that if you want to. The exact same way that we did before. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in the calculator. Don't forget the parentheses. Okay, now this time I'm gonna need two significant figures because this one only has two. So I'm gonna have to go with 120 joules. Okay, so now I can solve for the negative Q of my object since I found these two pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. Am I going too fast or is this good? No, this is good. Okay. All right, plugging it in. Q for water, 3,110 joules plus 120 joules, the Q of my calorimeter, is going to equal negative 3,230. Looks like 3,230 but I need um, two significant figures since this one only has two. So negative 3,200, whoops, negative 3,200 joules. All right, so that is the Q of my object. 
Now we're gonna rearrange this just like we did before to solve for a specific key. I'm not gonna write it out because you already know. So specific key equation is equal to Q divided by mass times change in temperature. So let's plug that in. Okay, Q is gonna be negative 3200, don't forget the negative sign, divided by, I'm gonna do a parentheses because I want the whole denominator. So mass, they tell me the mass of the metal was 45 grams times the change in temperature. I'm gonna do a new set of parentheses so I can just do all the subtraction right there. I don't have to do an extra equation. So it's gonna be my final temperature, same as the final temperature of the water, so 29.2 minus they tell me the initial temperature of the metal is 110. Okay, close both sets of parentheses. Plug it into your calculator just like that. Okay, I'm gonna let you plug it in and then you can tell me what you get. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Point eight eight zero, and then it goes and repeats it. Good. All right, and we want two significant figures, so I'm just going to leave it at zero point eight eight. And remember, our unit joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius, and that is the specific key of the metal. All right, it looks like 12.7 is doing the same thing. It's asking you for the specific heat of the unknown liquid. Um, so it's going to be the exact, oh, no, it's not. This is a different type of setup for you. So just know when you do this one on your own homework that instead of finding the specific heat of your metal, you're finding the specific heat of the liquid that's in the calorimeter. It's not water this time. Find what? You're going <coughs> to. This heat of the liquid yep, and that's in place of this right here in place of the Q of the water still going to use the same equations the same steps but you're going to be solving for this piece right here and then you'll go from there and solve uh, for the specific heat just like we did before but you're going to know this and this not this piece okay yep. but I still use the equation just I have a different part yep okay Yep. And if you have any questions, you can always reach me, but also your book lays it out really well um, for the on your own questions. So there's that for you too. So that's all you have for homework. It's 12.7 and then we will um, go ahead and start studying on Monday. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great weekend. You're welcome. You too. It's going to take me a second to close out. So I'm going to close silence. <laughs> All right, bye.